was born a disruptor, <laughs> a late life child, or what my parents called a mistake. <laughs> because I was practically an only child, my sister was 11 when I was born. Boy, did I disrupt her life. I enjoyed a grown-up childhood. My mother read me newspaper articles instead of baby books because, honestly, I think she had tossed them. <laughs> we listened to the radio nonstop. She also loved to look at houses. I knew a split level from a colonial when I was eight. <laughs> I'd sit in the car and read biographies while my parents hunted for houses. Thus, writing was not just the way I learned about the world, it was the way I processed it. When the mean girls in fifth grade hurt my feelings, I wrote short stories about them. <laughs> By the time I was a freshman at Wheaton College, I stalked every author who set foot on campus. I once followed Kurt Vonnegut Jr. almost a mile just to bask in his presence. <laughs> I wanted to write novels, but my mother said, you'll starve. <laughs> Marry rich or go to law school. My dad said, take your time, figure out what you really want to do. One of my professors suggested journalism. I guess he knew me pretty well. I had been observing people since I was born, but had no patience for a tome. So I opted for the sensible solution then. Leslie Stahl, an alumni of my college, put me on national television, 60 minutes, for a story about women's colleges. When friends in California called three hours later and said they saw me on TV, I was hooked by the power of broadcast media's incredible reach. After getting my master's in journalism at Columbia, I made my mother happy. I fell in love. Not with a rich man, but with a doctor. <laughs> he was brilliant, loving, adorable, the kind you keep forever. The only problem was he wanted to move to Dallas for his residency. It was where the Bible of Obstetrics was written. I'd never been south of the Mason-Dixon line. Who the hell lived in Texas? <laughs> then, after 42 years of marriage, my parents announced they were getting a divorce. I had been the only thing keeping them together, my dad said, and now I was married. Toodles! <laughs> it was a bitter separation. Think War of the Roses on steroids. So a big black cloud hung over me as I started my marriage. Suddenly, career didn't matter as much as family. I plunged into being a wife and mother. What had gone wrong in my parents' marriage wasn't going to happen to mine. One day, my exhausted husband handed me his practice checkbook as he ran out of the house to deliver a baby. Can you do this, he asked, keep books? No, I wanted to write books but I wanted to be a supportive wife and give this marriage every inch of my energy. So I said, sure. I helped him build his practice and his family. We had two kids, four golden retrievers, a duck because the kids wanted one for Easter, and a parrot that was a down payment on a hysterectomy. <laughs> I kept, I kept my fingers in the literary pot long enough for a byline or two. I wrote a story about burglaries in North Dallas in a sidebar called How to Burglarize a Home. <laughs> the step-by-step -step guide really irritated a lot of people, even Stanley Marcus, but by God, they read it. And so for years, it worked. Then suddenly, everything changed. My daughter was away at college, my son graduated from high school, and my parents died within a month of each other. 
My dad went first. That SOB is dead, my mother told me. Her greatest wish was to outlive my father so she could have his social security. <laughs> she got one month. <laughs> Slowly, I found a niche writing about homes again. Working in a world of 30-somethings revived me. It was like Harpool with cocktails. But media was in critical condition. I lived through two big layoffs at the magazine. So when they told us that we were going to have to blog in addition to everything, I panicked. I was an old broad who knew jack about computers. One day when Bill Clinton was president and she was still alive, my mother called me up and asked me what phone sex was and where you could buy those telephones. <laughs> That's where I was with blogging. <laughs> well, my son graduated from college and took a job in Silicon Valley. Of course, I would get him settled in California. He balked that he didn't need his mom. Ah, but I have a conference to attend in San Francisco, I said. I'm blogging. No, you don't, he said. Yes, I do. I lied. I did a quick Google search. Surely they would have something on blogging in San Francisco. That's where it was born, for God's sakes. Not only did I find one, the timing was perfect. Right after my son's first work day. I could get him settled, then go to the conference, sign in, learn how to blog, then hit Bloomies. Whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome to tech world. There wasn't a notebook in the place, not a paper one anyhow. People were using funny phrases like SEO and social media and evangelist. Wait, aren't they preachers? There was this guy named Spencer, who was also a speaker, who told me he had founded a real estate search company called Zillow. Well, I said, I cannot imagine you will be very successful in real estate with that name. <laughs> then the scariest thing of all happened. I sat in on the conference where they were teaching realtors about reporting and writing. Oh my god, I thought, they're teaching journalism to realtors? They are replacing us. Man, was I listening. I took copious notes in my reporter's notebook surrounded by a sea of smartphones. Technology was changing the world of media and real estate. Great. I rekindle my career, and the journalism I know is replaced by realtors. Who needs a reporter to tell you about a breaking news story when someone can just tweet out the details as they are happening? And why bother to write up a home when it will be sold by the time we go to print? An idea was bubbling in my brain that I couldn't quite define. But suddenly, I wanted a smartphone more than I wanted Ralph Lauren. <laughs> I saw the writing on the wall. Back home in Dallas, I forced my brain to be linear. I asked, I read, I screwed up, and I Googled. The born disruptor came up with the idea of having the very first real estate blog in Dallas. I spent hours at the computer finding links and posting, posting, posting. I broke stories. I got people pissed off at me. <laughs> But by George, they were reading. But something else was happening as my words tumbled into the blogosphere. I began to feel independence. I no longer had to wait for an editor's approval. I began to prefer blogging to print writing, loving the way I could reach so many people instantly. What was brewing in my brain at that San Francisco conference eventually took shape. Technology is such today that anyone can be a publisher, 
if they have enough time, passion, and grit. I saw the writing on the wall and started Candy's Dirt. I dig real estate dirt all day long, and then I post at night. I handle my own HR, ad sales, customer relations, and until recently, collections. <laughs> I work so much, my husband once thought I was having an affair. <laughs> because one night I never left the keyboard, and he thought I'd been out all night partying. <laughs> I am having an affair with my blog, but he's okay with that. Long ago, I put my aspirations on hold for my family. Now it's my turn. <laughs> we know only too well how life has a way of kicking us in the gut when we very least expect it. I have a passion, a purpose, and a business, and it's mine, all mine. <laughs> Perhaps my father was right after all. It took a bit of time, technology, and a whole lot of Botox to figure out what I wanted to do. <laughs> They say you can never go back home, but I think you really can. Thank you.